Since it's inevitable to bring up, what's your position on the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia? I, I actually have a couple of documents on it, uh, 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 bookmarked right now because I want to read more into it. I, the impression that I've been given, okay, so the impression that I've been given from online leftists, and unfortunately also by Noam Chomsky, who I disagree with on issues pertaining to this kind of subject, is that the bombing of Yugoslavia was NATO doing imperialism, and they killed a bunch of people, and they did it because they were evil. I know you, that Chomsky's perspective on this is not quite that black and white, but, I mean, he leans pretty hard in that direction. Now, the impression that I've been given from what I've read is that there was a uh, genocide arena happening uh, in Yugoslavia, and that the NATO bombings were what seemed to be a mostly good faith effort to abate the slaughter, which did not go perfectly, but probably saved far more lives than they ended. In fact, all of this research that I've done have indicated pretty clearly that the bombing of Yugoslavia almost certainly led to fewer people dying. Chat, is that the impression you've been given as well? Because from what I've looked into while well, actually, like, actually researching it and not just, like, listening to people online, Bernie supported the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia. Interesting. Clinton didn't intervene early enough? That's another thing that I heard, that we probably should have intervened sooner. What the fuck is the State Department anyway? I hear it all the time, but it just seems like a word with no meaning. The State Department specifically refers to the Department of State, uh, which is one of the original branches of the U.S. It's part of the executive branch, right? Essentially, the, um, the cabinet that the president has, they appoint leaders to, uh, uh, to head all of these branches of the government. Um, elements of the executive branch that pertain to different part of the executive branch's role. The most recent of these departments is the Department of Homeland Security created under George W. Bush um, because he is Satan. Uh, but you know, you have the Department of War, which was renamed the Department of Defense because optics. Um, you know, the, the, the um, Department of State or the State Department. You see. Yes, the Department of State is just a Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The, the purpose of the uh, State Department is just to manage the executive branch's relationship with everything going on outside of the country. So ironically, the Department of State is tasked with supervising literally everything that isn't the state, the United States. Now, what was the other NATO intervention that lefties tend to talk about in a negative light? It was, was it Yemen? I, I always, it's Ye Le Yemen and Libya. I always fucking mix shit up with those two. Libya, that's right, Libya. Everything that I've seen about that one uh, paints a somewhat more negative light on that particular, uh, <laughs> on that particular engagement. Libya with Gaddafi? Well, as I understand it, the problem with Gaddafi, you know, it wasn't that Gaddafi wasn't a terrible guy, because he was. The problem is, is that, you know, doing our gung-ho Western intervention bullshit doesn't necessarily secure a better country after it's done, right? Like, don't get me wrong, Gaddafi was really, 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 really bad, you know? So was Saddam Hussein. But killing the bad people doesn't mean things will be better afterwards. You often just create a power vacuum. He was a major stabilizing force in Libya, unfortunately. That's often how it is with strongmen. See, in order for a democracy to function, you need something called a civil society. A civil society is kind of a broad term, which refers to the attitude that the people within a country have towards self-governance, you know? The idea is that in a strong civil society, people are active citizens. Um, people are, people form committees, people have strong opinions on governance, you know, uh, and society molds itself around those desires, you know, free discourse, the ability to engage, to critique the government, to improve things, to change things. A civil society is just that. A, a social structure about the civil construction, reconstruction, and deconstruction of existing norms to meet the needs and desires of the citizenry. Does that make sense? Does that, does that follow? So the thing is, a civil society is something which has to develop kind of organically um, from, well, free countries, you know? Uh, they don't just emerge naturally. So... Countries that have liberal democracies tend to have relatively strong civil societies. Um, you know, the United States, France, Germany, not to say we're perfect, we're not 
at all. Um, but we do have fairly strong civil societies. Civil societies are something that you would ideally want even more so in socialism because they're really helpful for things like self-governance. It encourages high levels of education, political attainment, you know, involvement in local government. Stuff like that is really important for freedom and for individualism in a socialistic sense, you know, the ability to govern one's affairs. Now, the issue is, again, this isn't something that just happens overnight. It usually takes well, a while to develop this sort of stuff. So this is one of the reasons why all of the quote-unquote liberal democracies that sprung up in post-Soviet states were fucking terrible. In the absence of a strong civil society, and in the absence of a governmental, you know, organization to facilitate the construction of a strong civil society, what you get are fake democracies propped up by strong men and petty dictators. You know, like what Russia has, basically. Uh, with Russia also being a post-Soviet state. Does that make sense? So when you... It's situations like Gaddafi or Saddam Hussein, you know, or what we did in Afghanistan. Just because you take out the strongman doesn't mean that the infrastructure, both politically and socially, is in place for a better replacement. Sometimes strongmen, miserable people, murderers, rapists, thieves, torturers, cruel men are better for their countries because all you do by killing them is create a power vacuum which would break down the stability that their cruelty maintained. And that's just a horrible fact of the matter, uh, but it is a legitimate problem. It is a real thing. I guess removing Putin would do the same. I disagree with regards to Putin. Um, I, I do disagree there. I think that Russia, though it's very corrupt and a very poor democracy, Russia has the infrastructure to facilitate a movement into a post-Putin state. I don't think that they would suddenly become a democracy, but I don't think Putin's death would suddenly lead to a power vacuum. Well, it would lead to a power vacuum, but I don't think it would lead to, like, a failed state. I think I think there would be a um, you know I I think it would be I think it would be mitigated. I think it would be it would be handled. I think there are systems in place. But would it be better? As long as they do less uh, Ukraine invading, probably. We have to see. There's no guarantees and stuff like this, you know. But how do you build a strong civil society within a dictatorship? Well, if you guys want to see really good examples. Actually, the best example I can think of of a strong civil society being built out of a dictatorship would be post-World War II Japan. Uh, Germany had a strong civil society before Nazis took over. The Weimar Republic was one of the most liberal democracies of its era. But Japan was a feudal I imperial state the whole time until it became a fascist imperial state. And, uh, and, and and then they became a democracy. Now, mind you, not a great democracy. It's like a one-party democracy, and they're pretty conservative. But, you know, it's, it's, it is a civil society. Japan does have a civil society. Okay, but Japan was defeated by military means, so the civil society could prosper after the war, right? That would speak to the need for military intervention to topple a regime, doesn't it? Well, think of what happened uh, for a, a bunch of, like, European countries, right? So France had, like, 70 revolutions, you know? Um... Uh, in, in England's case, if I recall correctly, it was basically just the siphoning of power away from the monarchy towards the Prime Minister and the, um, and the House of Lords and Commons, right? Like, it was, like, the monarchy is still around, you know, but it was, it was like, e with, with every, you know, successive change to the government, you know, the, the heads of state did more and the monarch did less. Yeah, the monarchy was displaced. But yeah, if you if you look around the world, most of the time, as I understand it, most of the time, uh, the formation of a civil society is something which emerges as a product of legitimate revolutionary sentiment within a population against their autocratic government. And then that government is toppled or weakened either internally or externally. Uh, a provisional government is propped up, which is more receptive to the needs of the people, and then ideally from that point, a liberal democracy is formed. Remember, no matter what, what the liberals want to tell you about how violence is bad, most liberal democracies were born in blood. Zizek said that opposing the NATO bombings is like opposing the trial of a drug dealer by claiming that his crime is the result of a capitalist system. 
That is a very astute comparison. Um, Zizek is in favor of NATO's Yugoslavian bombings? I wouldn't have expected that. I must read his works in it. I'm very happy to hear this. My anarcho-natoist convictions grow stronger.